My name is Andy Holmes. I'm an author, and this is my short story, The Stranger. Gordon Stahl received his first B in the sixth grade. He cried his eyes out. His father demanded patriotic perfection. Gordon was drilled to say, please and thank you, open doors for ladies, wake up before sunrise to help his old man at the hardware store, and to never complain about his chores. Long division and multiplication arrived to ruin Gordon's perfect track record, and he just couldn't believe it when Mrs. Jacobson handed him the report card. With shaking hands, staring at the damn B, he vowed to be as close to perfect as a boy could get. Stall Hardware's fresh red paint smelt like sunshine. The family hardware store had been on the corner of Main and Forest since 1951. Gordon's father had come home from the war, they said would end all wars, worked around the clock as a handyman, and stuffed every penny he could away. He secured the loan for the property, got his business license, and the mayor even came down to take a picture with him on the opening day under the American flag above the front doors. The black and white photo still hung above the cash register. That, Gordon's father said, was without a doubt the best day of my life. All 12 years of Gordon's rail-thin body leaned on a broomstick. He stared up at the photo. When he was older, he'd look back on that statement and wonder how his birth or the old man's wedding to his mother stacked up to the glorious grand opening of Stall Hardware. He'd hoped they at least ran a close second to the best day of his father's life. I felt like a true hero after the war, his father had said. We fought the Nazis and protected what was ours. Sometimes that's all a man needs out of life, something to protect from evil men. The Stalls were hardworking, born from the freedom fought for by a long line of military men. They all had straight teeth and went to church on Sundays with press shirts. The men in the Stahl family were military men, stretching back all the way to the Revolutionary War. Or at least, that's what Gordon's father told every soul in Birchwood, Alabama. Gordon's job was to sweep the floors and stock the shelves. If he did a good job, he'd get an ice cream cone, and his father would play catch with him in the yard for a few minutes before dinner. His mitt was getting softer, and his knuckleball was starting to get mean. As he swung around the aisles of the hardware store, toting his broom, he'd imagine Nazis creeping around in the dark corners. He'd swing the broom handle like a rifle, and in a volley of hellfire, he gunned down Hitler's SS over and over again. Gordon knew all the Nazis were gone. His dad wiped them out so they could have this wonderful store and watch the Cardinals play on the television. But Gordon knew there would be more bad guys, and when he was old enough, he'd get his own rifle, jump out of an airplane, and protect what was his. How much are these, young man? The customer's voice jolted Gordon back to reality. The man was thin. He was wearing a brown tweed suit and a fedora. His freckled face smiled down on Gordon's golden head as he set his briefcase down on the linoleum floor and crouched so they were eye to eye. Gordon peered into the man's deep blue eyes and felt a cold chill roll over his body. The man jiggled a bag of nails. How much for these? Three dollars and ninety-five cents, Gordon said. That includes the tax? The government needs a chair. Gordon nodded. Good, because that's all I can afford right now. The rest of the change in my pocket has to pay for the bus to get me home. The man looked over his shoulder to see if there was anyone around listening. They were alone in the aisle. Do you know who I am? No. I don't have enough time to tell you about it now, but you can call me Grasshopper. Grasshopper? Gordon furrowed his nose. That's a funny name. Yeah, I hated it at first, but it grew on me. Now listen. Again, Grasshopper looked around to make sure they were alone. You're Gordon Stahl, aren't you? Yes, Gordon wasn't wearing a name tag. How'd you know? Grasshopper checked his watch. Time for me to go. You'll be seeing me around, but before I go, here's a tip. This Saturday, when you play the Padres in the bottom of the ninth, the runner on second will try to steal third. Grasshopper paid for his bag of nails and left the store. That weekend, Gordon was pitching. The sun beat down through his clothes and sweat beaded on his forehead. His parents were in the bleachers with what felt like the entire population of Birchwood, Alabama. He kicked the pitcher's mound and looked up at the scoreboard. Gordon's team was up over the Padres by a single run. Two outs and a runner on second. Gordon rubbed the red lace of the ball in his mitt. The pitcher signaled for a fastball. Jackson Dillon was up to bat. He was the biggest 12-year-old Birchwood had ever seen, and he could wall up any pitch into the grandstand. Gordon was convinced Jackson could play in the majors if he wanted to. He leaned over and prepared to pitch. Then, Grasshopper's words buzzed in his head. The runner on second will try and steal third. Gordon wound up, faking the pitch. He heard the sputter of cleats and people calling from the crowd. 
He spun around and flung the ball over to third. The runner tried to slide, but Gordon had beaten him. Game over. There goes the old ball game. The next time Gordon saw Grasshopper was in the 11th grade. Gordon had just gotten out of algebra, and his dad would be expecting him at the hardware store. He made his way across the parking lot to his old, red Dodge pickup. There was a man sitting in the flatbed. Can I help you? Gordon asked. That's not how you greet an old friend. Gordon looked the man over. There was something familiar about the brown suit and fedora resting on the man's head. A briefcase was nestled between his feet. Look, I'm going to be late to work. Will you get out of my truck? The man leaped down and stepped towards him. Look me in the eye and tell me you don't remember me. The man reached into his pocket and pulled out a bag of nails. He handed them to Gordon. Ten years ago, these were only $3.95. wonder what they cost now. Gordon's mouth swung open like a loose door hinge. Listen, I really didn't come here to spook you, the man said. I have a message. Linda Andrews keeps a diary. On page four of this diary, she writes about a blonde ball player who works for his dad at the hardware store. You walk by her locker every day while she talks to her girlfriends. You want to ask her out. Your nerves get the best of you every time, so you never do. You graduate hating yourself for being such a coward. The next year, when you get an invitation to her wedding, you bawl your eyes out, get drunk, and crash this old truck into a tree. It's stupid because it could have been avoided. All you needed to do was ask her out, but you need to do it now. She's in the cafeteria chatting it up with her friends. She'll be coming out into the parking lot in one minute. I'm handing you a happier life on a silver platter. Now go take it. The man checked his watch. Time for me to go. Good luck, Gordon. Wait, is your name really Grasshopper? It wasn't always, but it's what the boys called me before I died. Who are you? Time's up. There was laughter behind him. Gordon turned around and saw Linda walking out of the main building with a group of her friends. Wait, I don't under... Gordon flipped back around, but Grasshopper was gone. In his place, on the dusty road, was a bag of nails. Gordon made his way to Linda and her friends. Her red auburn hair bounced in the Alabama sun, and she blushed when she saw him trotting over. Linda's eyes went wide. Her foot snagged on a rock and she fell forward. Her arms were full of books and they went skidding across the ground. Her notebook fell open before Gordon's feet. He knelt down and read the first line. I'm in love with Gordon Stahl. Linda snatched the notebook from his arms and brushed the hair out of her eyes. All the color had flushed out of her face. You okay? He asked. I'm fine, and that is private. I know. Can I take you out to dinner? Two years later, Gordon dropped to a knee in a green field as fireflies shot up into the sky. He asked, and she said yes. A month later, Gordon stood in the living room holding his new wife as Lyndon Johnson spoke on the TV. The United States of America had been attacked by the North Vietnamese. War was about to start. Linda buried her face in her husband's chest and cried. They both knew what he was going to do. The next morning, Gordon's father picked him up and drove him to enlist. Gordon stepped out of the car and thumbed his gold wedding band. The calluses from his baseball days were still thick, and he wondered if he'd stuck with it, if he would have made it into the big leagues. Jackson Dillon did. Why couldn't he? I'm damn proud of you, son, Gordon's father said from behind the wheel. I'll be here when you come out. Gordon walked up the steps and entered the building. When he reached for the door, a hand snaked out in front of him and grabbed the knob. Let me get that for you, the man said, pushing the door open. Gordon saw the fedora and a briefcase dangling from the man's free hand. A panic coiled around his windpipe. This timeless figure had been following him all his life. Grasshopper hadn't aged a day, but Gordon had first seen him 11 years ago in an empty aisle of the hardware store. Grasshopper stepped into the building and walked into the waiting room. There was a handful of young guys like himself waiting in line to speak with a military recruiter. Grasshopper was in the corner, leaning against the wall with his arms crossed. His trusty briefcase was on the floor. Gordon stormed over to him. Just who the hell are you? You've been following me around since I was a kid. Are you some sort of stalker? Now don't make a scene, Grasshopper said. I don't think that would go over very well in a military facility. What do you want with me? How did you know about the ball game in Linda's diary? Because I'm from the future, and I'm here to ask you not to enlist. I have to. No, you don't. Just because your old man did doesn't mean you have to. You aren't making any sense. Gordon squeezed his eyes. I'm losing my goddamn mind. You probably aren't even real. The doors opened, and a young man entered to enlist. Grasshopper called out to him. Hey, your shoe's untied. 
The man stopped and looked down at two perfectly snug and tied shoes. What are you talking about? Sorry about that, Grasshopper said. My mistake. The man continued on. See? I'm real. You're not crazy. Gordon took a step back. Now listen to me carefully, Gordon. The future needs you. I helped steer your destiny a little because I thought your life could use some happiness before the dark days ahead. I also needed you to believe me when this moment came. If you enlist, you'll die. You'll die a hero, saving many men as you go out in a blaze of glory. They'll give you the purple heart and your old man will hang it up in the hardware store and everyone in Birchwood, Alabama will talk about how big of a hero you were. Linda will mourn and in three years time she'll remarry and have a couple of babies. She'll be happy, but every once in a while she'll cry herself to sleep thinking about the life she could have had with you. But there is another world, another future, where you don't enlist. It's a future I can't tell you anything about other than it desperately needs you. Bad things are going to happen, and you have the power to stop them. You trusted me before. I'm asking you to trust me again. It's a leap of faith. Gordon's mind whirled. When he was a boy, he brushed Grasshopper off as a figment of a young boy's imagination. But after seeing the written words hidden away in Linda's diary, he couldn't deny that the impossible was happening, that Grasshopper was real. He spent the next two years happy, falling deeper in love with Linda every minute. How did this man know so much about him? Prove it, Gordon said. Grasshopper reached into his breast pocket and pulled out a set of dog tags. Gordon snatched them and read the lettering that was hammered into the metal. Gordon Stahl. Someone tapped Gordon on the shoulder and his heart shot up into his throat. He jumped up and shrieked. A freckled man, the same age as Gordon, stood before him and laughed. Man, you jump like a grasshopper. Maybe that's what we'll call you over there in Nam. I hear all the grunts have nicknames. My name's Joshua. I'm thinking about going by Pirate. What's your name? Gordon turned back around. Grasshopper was gone. Only this time, he left his briefcase behind, and there was a note taped to it. Gordon picked it up. Stay in Alabama. Hide the briefcase. Don't open it. On your 83rd birthday, spin the locks to 129 and 587. All sorts of magic will happen after that. Don't put that combo in a day before then. I haven't been wrong yet, but the choice has to be yours. Hey man, everything all right? Joshua asked. I'm sorry, I'm not enlisting today. Why, you chicken shit? Maybe, but sometimes you just have to listen to yourself. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Don't forget to like and subscribe and head on over to www.andywritestories.com to check out more of my work and I'll see you next time.